It is my privilege that we can continue our Bible study about stewardship. And today we have the subtitle of Debt as a Daily Decision. We want to read the Bible verses from Romans 13, 6 and uh, 7. Or 7 and 8. Render therefore to all the dues, tribute to whom tribute is due, custom to whom custom, fear to whom fear, honor to whom honor. Owe no man anything but to love one another, for he that loveth another has fulfilled the law. So we'll talk about the financial depths, but it is included in the principle of all um, kind of depths as humans can enter in their life. We remember that a steward is one that manages the property of another one. He can have no own property. He must have the ability to do the job and he must be able to give a responsibility for that. Now we remember that God created men for a purpose. The purpose was to sustain the life on earth. Man was the only link that God made between him and the earth. And he should bring the power of life to all the inhabitants that were to be on this earth. He had to be the steward and he had to act to do these things. But when he failed, when he separated from God, he could no longer fulfill his purpose. He lost the ability. Now that he thinks he's God, all belongs to him. He does not know that he can be a steward. He cannot be a steward anymore. A steward can only be a created being, never a God. And now, being so deceived in his mind, he cannot fulfill anything on this purpose. And we have seen in the last presentations that through Christ, man got back the stewardship. Christ took over the place of Adam and brought man back to be able to see himself as a created being, to be able to not go over that estimating himself higher than he is. And so man became again a steward, but now a steward of the law of life. He should communicate to teach to the world this law that reveals to men that they are not a God, that they are a created being, that they are dependent on a creator. The teaching of this law is that what God put into the hands of his disciples, those who took the name of Christ as their name. And then they should show at the same time the love of God and the salvation in Christ. They should bring to the world the second chance that they can become steward. They can become again what they really are, made as a creature from God and be free from the slavery of the devil and of self-deception. And, of course, to be there to help others in need. So that's the job that the person has who becomes a Christian, who becomes a follower of Christ. Can he fulfill this purpose without means? Of course not. The needs and the means we must take from somewhere in order to fulfill it. So God still gives us the same means that he gave to Adam in Eden. He gives us his love, his righteousness. Everything God has in store is available for every disciple of Christ to take it in order to fulfill the purpose. The food, the water, the material things, the tools, time as a spiritual means was given to us to fulfill that. Relationships, children, appetite, passion and sexuality and life itself, it's all was given that we should give it that we might fulfill this purpose. 
And while we want to talk today about that, what calls somehow to be the ground of all these means, that is money. Today, we think that without money, we can do nothing. It's not the correct thinking, but nevertheless, we have in this earth something that we convened about, or we were born into this, that money is there as a basic means which with, with which you can buy all other means. Looks like so. But God is not dependent on money. But he gave us this means so that we could use them. And so money play a major role in the life of men. They really believe that they can buy with money whatever they need. Some wants to buy their love by giving money to others so that they might be loved. Some buy their food, yes, because we are not farmers anymore, most of us, and so we need to go to get from somehow, but the farmer doesn't give his work for free, so we have to buy it. And so we need materials and all this, we have to buy it. We need relationships, and some people buy their relationships and their children with money. And the appetite, sexuality, and passion is also something that can be sold on the market, and we think money can fulfill that. And even people think they can give money for their life. But at least when they come on their bed of death, and they would say, I will sell all the money I have just for an hour to live, there is nothing that can buy life. So money is something that was, is a convenient thing that people convened about, but in the end, money in himself have neither any value nor any power. They are just there because we put them as a, a uh, how can I say, they, we input it instead of these things. So we need to deal with money and we need to know how we deal with them. And it is with the money the most nicest thing to see that the law can never be broken. You must take the money from somewhere and you must give it to somewhere. So where to take and where to give. You can never give any money before you have not taken them. Yes, you can promise, but then you go into a situation where you didn't give it first. So everything, every money that we can give, we must first take from somewhere. Even if we took that credit card, we must take it from somewhere. You can never make a transaction of money to give money without you took them before. So here is a very nice example that all means are not, are not from us. The means must come from outside of us. And they are coming from God. But now humans put something instead, because money are not an invention of God, uh, in, instead of the means of God, so that we can buy the means with this money. So money, we must talk about where to take and where to give. Now, money can be our own income when we work. But even when it's our income, we didn't use our own power. We used the power of God. We used the power that he sets there in the food we eat and uh, in the information that he gives us through his word. So no one can have an income to take money from himself. But everything he does where he goes to a job and he receives an income... It is because he uses the power of God to give. So here he uses the power of God to get some money or he goes to the bank and gets the money or he gets the money from a donation or he borrows it from other people or even he receives it or takes it as inheritance. So that's the places where we can take money and there might be more but I just enumerated a few of them. And then where to give? We have to do the living expenses. 
because we are not living on a farm. We have to build a house or founding a business. We have to bring the money even to the bank so that they can grow there, uh, invest them or put them into projects. We can give the money as a donation. We can lend it to other people and we can give it as an inheritance. So we have to take it from somewhere and give it at another place. So the question is, what is then crucial in uh, dealing with money? And crucial is the motivation for whom do I do it? For whom do I take the money and for whom do I give it? You see, all means God has put to our disposition. But if the means are used for oneself, they are all used wrongly. You see, the purpose is never you. The purpose is never the person. The purpose is always the work with the means. God is the one that is love. And so he is the one that gives. So he made everything according to his image, according to his law, for the purpose to give. So it's never to keep something back. And we saw this in the past. And I hope we remember that the law can never change. Whatever we think we use for ourselves is a self-deception. All the means were just there to use them for the purpose. And when we don't use them for the purpose, the means are wrongly used. And they are then brought and they bring unto us a debt. They bring unto us more a curse than a blessing. I would like to read that Bible verse from Matthew 6, 33 which will conclude and show all this together. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. And it is about the means that we usually need for the everyday life. So if the seeking in all that what we do is not the kingdom and his righteousness, and are inseparable from each other, then everything we do is wrong. I hope we understand that. So let's look to the temptations to go into debt. Why go people into debt? Why do they spend the money in a wrong place or they go to lend money? So the temptation to go into debt is in times of emergencies. And we all come into emergencies and here is the question, how shall we deal with the emergencies? And yes, for someone, emergency is one, and for the other is the other thing. But we never come into a problem when uh, uh, to, we, we do not have a need to go into debt if we are not, first of all, in a so-called emergency. And people go, and then they lend money, or they do something when they, have in a, they are in a need. I was in a need uh, 14 years ago and something, 14 and a half years ago, to, to buy a practice because the Lord uh, brought me there that I should not go back to work in a hospital, but to work in a practice. And so I had no money. And I had to go to the bank to lend the money to be able to build a practice and I went into so-called that but but we will talk about that a little bit later as well there is another reason to go into that another temptation the desire to pursue the needs beyond measure that means you want something that is too much you cannot bear it but you still want it yes because our desires our eyes are very big we are made for Eden not for this world and we want the luxury or we want the nice things. And then so we are tempted by wanting more than we can afford. And so we go beyond that. And I have done that as well. I, have, uh, I was in 2007. I had a need of a car and the 
The Lord gave me a car. It was a, a very humble car, uh, 20 years old, uh, a Golf uh, Second, if someone knows that. The, the Golf, the, the second model. And, and I said to myself, even though I got that car and it still worked very well, I got it to a very cheap price, 300 euro. So uh, no debts necessary for 300 euro. But here I am, I'm a doctor, I'm having my own practice, and I'm thinking this is not really the, the car I can go to visit my patients. If they will look to my car, they will say, this is a poor doctor. And I didn't want to look poor. I didn't want to just go not with the prestige. So I said to the Lord, I have to buy a car. And of course, you put the car on the business and you think if you earn enough, then you have tax reduced, uh, um, you reduce your tax and all this. And so I, I financed the car because I had no money. I had to finance it over five years. And I paid a lot of money from the Lord's money to that car and I, I, th I thought it would never end the payment the Lord allowed me to do it and he helped me go through but it was a totally unnecessary thing I went beyond that I could so, so call bear and the Lord had to keep me through it Thank God the car broke last year. And now I'm here again. I need a car. Will I go again to go beyond? And I said, Lord, whatever car, it's fine. Because, you know, it doesn't matter anymore. But back then, it's 11 years ago, I couldn't conceive to just drive a so-called humble car, as a doctor. You see, that's our selfish nature. That is how we think. We have to put things so to show up because the God in us that we think we are must rise himself above all our people or be at least equal with them if they have the same status. And God gave me a good car. It just... Not even a quarter for that, what I paid for the other one. And it has almost the same luxury in it. And so I thank God for how he treats me and how he gives me the means, because a car is a means. But it should be one that you use for the purpose, but not go beyond that. Yes, you like it when it's clean, when it's leather seats or whatever it is. But... Uh, because this is how God made us to want the luxury. And yes, in heaven, we will have the luxury uh, that all our spirit desires, because God made us for the beautiful, for the beautiful thing, for the best things, for the most desirable. And He has prepared that for all uh, because He knows our needs. And he made us that all this meat should be met. There is another temptation to go into that if you go into excessiveness. Some people lose reality and they, they just live from borrowing from others. And it's amazing. It's, it's, I encountered a few of these people in my life and, and they, they don't even see what they do. They just heap on the debt and they... they, they lost completely and they even think it's 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 duty of others to help them when they are in need it's a terrible thing because these people never learn that's why they go and 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 always beg for some uh, money for other things and they don't know that's wrong and then there are people who never learn to handle money and other means wisely they just uh, use everything without thinking about, without reasoning with God together. You see, if all the means are coming from God and I am working for Him, I should be able to talk 
with God about how I would spend all those money, how I would do what is right to do and not go into a thing without asking God first. And if you want to ask God, if you know how to deal with that, you have learned it and you go for it. But it's sometimes a hard lesson to humble yourself and to say, Lord, how shall I deal with this? We trust ourselves and I trusted myself a few times where I got into the situation where I lent and it was not good. So I want to put another thought here in when debt is no debt. You see, some people are very straight. They think all debt is debt. And I would put that a little bit under a sign of questioning. Because from my experience, I would say there is no debt when the means I buy or I purchase do not decrease, but rather increase in their value. That is a house, a business, or a property, a land. See, when I first got converted and we had to go to find a home to live, we found one that was for selling or for renting. But the man obviously wanted to sell it. And we were the first before the advertising came out a week later. And so we had to decide, what shall I do? Shall I buy the house, but I was an unemployed doctor. I was just in between finding uh, my my way. I uh, had no really saved money because I was not a good steward until then. So I had only twenty five thousand euro, and this house was on the market for three hundred thousand. So what to do? I liked it. We liked it, and. Here I say, Lord, I need your help. You need to tell me, shall I just rent it? Because I rent, I can afford to rent. But what if then someone comes on that advertising and says, I want to buy the house? Then, of course, the owner will, buy, will sell it and not will rent it because he will have not the trouble with uh, renting something. And so I was there. I had to take a decision. And I was, that didn't know what to do. And so I said to the Lord, Lord, you need to help me. I won't go into that house of that man if you don't give me an answer. And there was my Bible open and the thought was, read the Bible verse on the right side, the left one, the last one down there. And that was open in Jeremiah 32, verse 15. And it says this like this. For thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, houses and fields and vineyards shall be possessed again in this land. And the German translation is, will be bought again in this land. So I understood from what I read there that I should go to buy the house. Now I must tell this. I did once a mistake in my life and I asked the Lord and I doubted what I read. And that mistake uh, is vivid in my eyes. And so this time I read this and I said, I understand, Lord, that I should go to buy the house. Because you say it's still time. And it says here, thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, houses and fields and vineyards shall be possessed, bought again in this land. And so I told my wife that I will go, will go to buy the house. But I was unemployed. I had no means. I had 25,000 euros. How much can you buy when the house costs 300,000? 3, 3, and you cannot go to the bank because the bank will say, well, first a job. And then you come and lend money from the bank. But since I once disobeyed God, I said this time I do it. It doesn't matter if it kills me. So I went, I bought the house. The man gave me the house. I said, I will give you 50000 as, as a down payment and the rest I give you when I 
have a job and I go to the bank and uh, they will give me uh, the credit so I can pay you the money. Would you ever sold me the house like that? I said I would have not sold it to me that night, but a man gave it to me. The next day when a few people called for the house, he said the house is sold. Sold. And so we are living still in the house now for 15 and a half years. And the Lord blessed it. And he keeps it. But you see, if I would have never went into this so-called debt, I would never be here. And I had to go. I didn't have even the credit for this house, the 240 that still I were missing because he left it from, from, from 300,000 to 290,000. Uh, and I gave him 50,000. I borrowed something from my mom and she, she gave it so that I had that, that down payment. And the rest of 240,000, I, still, I didn't have them yet. The bank didn't decide to give me, even though I had a job, to give me the money. And now here comes the Lord and says, I should buy a practice. And the practice is 65,000 euro. Just, just a business. And then, of course, whatever I had to put in was over 200,000. Now, what shall I do? And the Lord says, go and buy. I said, Lord, no money. But I learned to listen. I learned to obey. And I went, I bought the practice without money. The man gave it to me. I said, you must believe me in two months. When you fit, quit, I will have the money for you to give it to you. But he had to sell it to me. We had to do the papers in front of the officiality long before, two months before. I started to take over that practice. And the man gave it to me. Something very unusual. But still, I asked the Lord, and the Lord said, go and do it. So, I do not consider myself in debt, even though I haven't paid all the practice yet, almost everything, the practice pays. The house is not paid yet, for long not. But, I do not consider it as a debt. Because if by today I could not do my job anymore, and I would sell the practice, there would be enough money to even pay the house and still remain with the house and had no debt. So whatever we do and put things right and put money or even buy something with the money of the bank that did not decrease but rather increase in their value, I would not consider it as a debt. Of course, we have to ask the Lord, I will never do it without asking to know for sure it's God's will. But now I know the Lord has some debt because these are means to work with. If I would have not had the practice, how could I have ever learned all that what I learned about the law of life? If the Lord would have not sent me to do the, the debt, how would I ever reach the point that I, have, I am now? Because I had no inheritance. I had no parents that could, could uh, inherit me any, anything. So the Lord knew how to deal with it. So it's not something wrong. And I would not consider it as a not good advice to buy something or to to do something where you have no money and you go to the bank, but you don't spend it for cars, by example, or for something that loses or is just a using means, but for something that even over the time, in normal situations, of course, will rather increase in their value than decrease. But if we all do according to God's will and ask God before, obviously we will have no Worries. I have no worries about my dad because it's not mine. It's God's. And I even, to those people who come to me and they say, well, I have this debt and that, I say, give it to God. And then you're free. He will help you out of it so that your mind can be free. 
every that that we give to God, He will help us. He will show us the way how to deal with it correctly. And He is there to support us. He is always there to help, even when we in life made mistake according to the money. Now, in some countries, in some cultures, the borrowing or lending from other people is very common. And I come from a country there, uh, this some people just do. I could say I would never borrow anything. I'd rather die to borrow from people. And I can't remember, except from my family, to, to borrow something. But to go to people and, and, and borrow money and say, hey, I need to do that and that, I, 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 don't, I can't remember that I have done it so that I should be a, a slave of other people. But nevertheless, let's look to the principles. I learned because I was more the one that gives when he's asked for. You have to give only for acute short-term situations. Never give for optional or deferrable situations. Situations that are not necessary. Like example, I did a great mistake of lending some money to a man who wants to go to marry to, to get his wife from, a, from another country. And he had no money to go to get his wife from the other country. And I, I'm looking now back and say, Lord, how was I so blind? The Lord remembered me. I should ask what I should do first. But, but my wife promised it. And I, I said, well, it, it's, it's good to help. Yes, yes, God put that in us to help. But it's, it is a thing that... We should never enter to give any optional. If you have no money to marry, you don't marry. That should be very clear. If you are not able to, to, to have a, your own uh, situation, then how shall you go somewhere and, and get a wife and then from what, what would you live? But this is how sometimes when you don't think, when it's just... You go by your, the impulses of your heart, which, you see, uses the good that God gave us to help, but you go with the impulses of selfishness that does not help. So we must be based in our dealing with money with other people on very strong principles. And I must say that uh, so the, the nature I have is, is rather to give from myself than, than to be very solid saying no. Because you need, as a, as a person that needs harmony, you, you never want to offend anyone by saying no. But then you are let and this, this, um, how can I say it, deceived by your own heart to do things that you think are right and helpful and in the end they are destroying. I made mistakes in my life and I learned from them. The Lord is willing to pay those money off just that we should learn that we should depend on Him and not on ourselves to, to reason because it's His means. It is His means. So n we should be very clear. We can go give for acute Short term, maybe we could say life saving situations. Yes, like in medicine, we have the emergency situation, the emergency surgery, or the elective surgery. And the elective surgery can wait and can even be not done necessarily if it's just an elective, not a life saving surgery. So let's conclude. There might be more to say about money, but I think as I'm not a money expert, I would just give this, this principle thing. And there is one principle the Bible shows us. It says we should never borrow from other people. I would never go to borrow from other people. Because I say to the Lord, if you don't give the money, I don't go to take them. You see, when he sent me to take the money from the bank, I took it. But he never sent me to ask for everyone, for any other human being to borrow anything. He never did. 
And I'm glad for this principle. And now today, if I come into a situation, I say, Lord, if you don't have the means to give it to me so that I can use them in your work, then I'm sorry, I cannot work. Because he is the one that is responsible for the means. I am just responsible for using them. That's very simple. My practice is not my practice. It's his, his practice. He is the boss. I am the employer. He takes care for the, the, the means. I just use them. No means, cannot use anything. So that's a very nice way to, to co-work with God. And so you're, you're having no stress to think, to go, what, when the ministry is not going anymore, what to do? I say, Lord, I'm your, your servant. I serve, I search first your kingdom. I don't search myself, at least not consciously. I don't serve uh, unrighteousness. I serve, I search your righteousness. And so whenever something doesn't go, when I have no means... I cannot do nothing. I'm dependent on your means, Lord. And he never let it. And he never will. Because he is always faithful. He just has no people to work for him. That's his greatest problem. Money is never a problem. Means are never a problem for God. The only thing is human resources. He has no persons that are dedicated continually totally to the kingdom of God and to his righteousness. They all search their own, their own establishment. They search to be good because they make out of a means a purpose. God may help us to be able to be consciously just dedicated to his work. And then we, should, we will never have to think because this is what Jesus promised. He says, you, all other things will come without any questioning. It is his word. If we go to serve him from our heart, we search the kingdom. We have a goal, the purpose, not the means. The means are not for us. The means are just to use for the purpose. If you search his kingdom and his righteousness, everything else is included. And I made this experience in the last 15 and a half years. And I know that God is never, never failing. So never borrow from other people. Rather, I say, Lord, if you don't bring me the money, I never go to people. And if you don't send me to the bank, I don't go either to the bank. I just stick here. And wait. And when I have the means, I do. And until I have no means, I do just what I can. But I wait on you. Because without means, I can do nothing. And as another principle, we should be always willing to lend other people. But according to the things above. Be wise. Because some people come and use that what God put in us as the goodness. And we are willing to do good, but we don't see that our selfish nature betrays us to do a supposed good, which in the end is evil. Because everything we do out of our selfish nature must be evil. So may God help us to be stewards in the means of money that are correct, that does, do not use them for themselves. But everything the Lord provides, we will put in into that one purpose to bring the gospel to the world, to bring the law of life to the world, and to put everything into that. All the means, all our powers, and all our lives for this one goal, that we may hear one day the words, well done, your good and faithful service, servant. You have been faithful in the Little things go in into the joy of thy Lord. Amen.